um, Senate Bill 700. And 41, which seeks to amend and reenact uh, two sections, uh, several sections of the Code of Virginia relating to facial recognition technology, uh, Department of State Police and authorized users. Uh, the bill's report committee on public safety with the substitute. The committee substitute was rejected. There subsequently was a floor uh, substitute that was agreed to, and um, Delegate Leftwich has floor amendments drawn to that substitute that have been distributed. They're available on IAHOD and they are um, before the body. The delegate from Chesapeake, Delegate Leftwich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaking to the uh, floor amendments. The delegate has the floor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members of the body, uh, there are six amendments, but they're they're all the same for the most part. Or not, they are all the same. Uh, the first amendment dictates that uh, local law enforcement, with the state police, local law enforcement, and the campus police will not use facial recognition technology for surveillance and monitoring. And any image that's run through that software will, be, will not be stored permanently as part of the database. The Second Amendment, uh, which applies to all three categories, would enhance the penalty for misuse of the software. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would move that floor amendment. Shall the floor amendment be agreed to? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The floor amendments are agreed to. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. Uh, this, we've talked this bill to death. I simply move passage of the bill. The delegate from Newport News, Delegate Price. Um, I rise to speak to the bill. The delegate has the floor. Thank you. I appreciate the gentleman saying that we have talked about this, but I think that there has been some confusion, and so I just wanted to make sure that while I appreciate the attempt with the amendments, why I think we still have not gotten there with this bill. Um, I wanted to summarize for those that are watching us closely where we currently are. Current law states that law enforcement cannot use this technology unless expressly stated by statute. So right now, if they're using this technology, it's illegal, and we're expressly stating it with this bill. So when we pointed that out, the next talking point was that, well, the state police are using it, so we must do something. But what they didn't tell you is that the state police are only using the database of mugshots, and that in the last few years, it has been a very limited number of cases, and they had to get prior approval to use it. So this bill actually expands what they are currently doing. And as far as widespread use of the technology, to be clear, on the federal level, Republicans and Democrats alike, along with big businesses, are doing something. They're fighting for agencies and organizations to stop using this technology. It was being used by the RIRS, and because of the error rates, both parties were saying, please stop using it. So why should we allow law enforcement to use it? Who even asked for this bill? I haven't found law enforcement that asked for it. I haven't found defense attorneys, prosecutors. It's not the big tech companies that are refusing to sell the technology to law enforcement. So who is it? Who is this bill for? And you know, we talked about who the experts are and what the experts, experts are saying. Well, I think we should listen to the experts that are concerned for the 20 times out of a thousand runs that we would get to false positives, especially for Asian and black communities. Let's listen to the lawyers across the entire world who are questioning you, the use of this technology and saying that it is a violation of privacy, a breach of human rights, data protection, and equality laws. Let's listen to the experts like Ruha Benjamin, who's the faculty fellow at the Science, Technology, and Society program, who called this tools for the new Jim Crow. And one more person we can listen to, Mr. Speaker, is Robert Williams of Detroit, who was arrested based off facial recognition technology. And when he was being arrested, when he said he didn't do it, the officer said, well, the computer said you did. He was one of those statistical 20 out of 1,000 who sat in jail until other people could help prove that it wasn't really him. And because it was mentioned on the floor this week that we shouldn't legislate while litigation is ongoing, the ACLU actually has a lawsuit about this situation. 
And they point out, by employing technology that is empirically proven to misidentify black people at rates far higher than other groups uh, of people, the Detroit Police Department denied Mr. Williams the full and equal enjoyment of the DPD's services, privileges, and advantage because of his race or color. There is no shortage of experts outside of this room who have been warning us for years about this technology. This bill is not just guardrails for the state police's limited usage. This bill is expressed establishment and expansion beyond what the state police is doing and giving new express permission to law enforcement and college campuses. We're not just getting ahead of it here, y'all. By voting for this, you are putting a stamp of approval on the technology, expanding it, and then we're funding it in the budget. I urge you to say no to the fear tactics, to listen to your constituents who do not want this, to vote for the people and not for profits, and so I urge you to vote no. The delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Tran. Mr. Speaker, speaking to the bill. The delegate has the floor. Thank you. I wanted to share my thoughts on why I will be voting no today. What we've heard throughout this debate on this bill, really, the premise was Virginia State Police is using facial recognition technology right now, unfettered, running amok, and we absolutely need to put guardrails on them because this technology can be dangerous without those guardrails. There's such an incredible sense of urgency and, quite frankly, fear, as my colleague, the delegate from Newport News, noted. So we reached out to the state police to say, exactly what are you doing? They don't have a stance on this bill, but what are you doing? Is it everything we fear? In a nutshell, they sometimes use facial recognition technology during an investigation. They only run that image through the Central Criminal Records Exchange, the repository for booking or mug photos or mugshots. They have internal policies and controls for when it's used, who runs the searches, how the searches are run, and they train their personnel because they realize that there are limitations to this technology. It was used 67 times in 2020, 47 times in 2021, and only three times so far this year. So while we may have concerns about how the state police is using it, they are using it on a limited basis. And I appreciate these amendments, but my underlying concerns remain. This bill expands the ability of local law enforcement and campus police to use this technology. And expanding it comes at a potentially steep cost to the people of Virginia. I'm not talking about the monetary cost, but rather at a cost to our civil liberties. The research is clear. Women and people of color, particularly black and Asian people, are often most falsely identified. In a recent study, the facial recognition systems are up to 100 times more likely to falsely identify black and Asian faces. When you add things like lighting and the weather, your expression, my mask, oh, you're skewing the results. Even big major technology companies recognize the limits of this technology. And in 2020, during the nationwide protests about criminal justice reform, racial profi pro profiling, and police brutality, you had Amazon, Microsoft, and IBM all initiated a self-imposed ban on selling their facial recognition technology software to law enforcement until Congress takes action. I find this really interesting and actually really compelling because these major tech firms, they stand to make gobs and gobs of profit. But instead, they're holding themselves back because they don't think it's the right moment for this use. And it is not a perfect science, but when you consider it's used by law enforcement, I think the risks are magnified because the stakes are high. A mistake could mean that you deny justice for that victim. You take away an innocent person's freedom. And this year we voted on several bills to provide um, restitution to individuals who were wrongly convicted and we heard their pain. And that's what we risk if these bills become law. We also heard from the delegate from Culpeper about his concerns of Big Brother government surveilling us. Our face, an incredibly public part of our identity, yet at the same time, such an intimate part of who we are. We have a face print, just like a fingerprint, that is uniquely ours. 
The idea that someone is capturing that image, storing it somewhere to be used at some point is really disturbing. And yeah, it happens every day. Whether we're caught on a security camera video here in the Capitol or when you're on Zoom and somebody screenshots that meeting and posts it online, and it seems innocuous enough until it isn't. We know some countries are surveilling their citizens, identifying people who are protesting their government and using those images to identify, track down, and arrest their citizens. While what we're talking about with this bill is pretty far from that, we are opening the door wider for this erosion of our privacy. And frankly, even right now, one of the major companies intent on expanding facial recognition, recognition usage by law enforcement is widely reported to be scraping or pooling our facial images from websites and social media and other content to build a mega database of images that are being stored without our consent. Last week we heard, hey, if that mega database is being built, then you know we should try to wrap our arms around it. Just because this unethical practice is happening doesn't mean that we have to encourage it and allow these companies to monetize the capturing, storage, and use of our face without, law, without our consent. That's what we're endorsing if this bill becomes law. The last piece that we haven't talked about are some of the protections that have been mentioned that are included in this bill. For example, it requires a 98% accuracy rate in one or more of the data sets of the National Institute for Standards and Technology facial recognition vendor test. If you don't know what that means, it sounds pretty highfalutin. So I took a look at those reports and I reached out to some experts. And I just want to clarify, NIST has multiple data sets. Uh, so if you look, here's, an, here's a uh, um, results for one particular company, <laughs> the one I was talking about earlier. It has an error rate of less than 1% for one data set, but a 30% error rate in another data set. So that company would qualify under this bill because it meets one or more. This bill is also missing some important protections to address the issues we've just discussed. You can ban the use of face images that were obtained without consent help to address surveillance and privacy concerns. You could have even stronger requirements for training of law enforcement officers to help reduce user error. What we need are policies that reduce bias and center strong civil protections, and this bill just doesn't quite get there. Rather, it increases the risk for additional bias and racial profiling in our criminal justice system and the erosion of our privacy and civil liberties, and that is why I will be voting no this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The delegate from Caroline, Delegate Orock. Mr. Speaker, I move the pending question. Pending question has been called for. As many as favor that motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion is agreed to. Shall the bill pass? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 54, noes 42. Ayes 54, noes 42. The bill passes.